So now that we have the Welsh Allen, Mirth Connect, and the database all talking to each other, it'd be nice if we could expand out the data that it stores a bit more. Because right now the Welsh Allen is sending out more data than the database is currently storing. So the Welsh Allen sends the data and Mirth Connect receives it, but it doesn't use all of it. So one of the things we didn't add was SPO2. So in this video, we'd like to add in SPO2 to the database and to Mirth Connect. Now this is a multi-step process, and the first step is to begin by modifying the database itself. So I'm going to log into the virtual machine as Mirth with our Linux password for, for the Mirth account. And I'm going to do MariaDB hyphen P, which is going to ask you for a password. And we enter in the password for the SQL user Mirth, not the Linux user. In this case, I left it as just password. So now that we're in the database system logged in, we can do use Mirth, which tells it to use the database called Mirth. See the database has been changed. Now we can describe patient. And you can see the current structure of our database and we don't have a entry for SPO2. So what we wanna do is we wanna add a field for SPO2 so Mirth Connect has something to put that value into. So what we wanna do is we want to alter table patient add column and we call it PSPO2 int. And int just means integer. So we're creating a new field called PSPO2 with the type integer. We press enter. It says query OK. So we can do describe patient again. And you can see we now we have a PSPO2 field in our database. So we can exit out of this and log out of our Mirth user. Now we can go back to our Windows machine. So now here we are at our Mirth Connect interface and what we want to do is we want to tell Mirth Connect we want to store the SPO2 value and tell it where to put it. So in this case what we want to do is before we start editing stuff we want to go to Channels, View Messages, and in here you can see these are the two messages that have been sent. You may only have one message so far, but you want to click on one of the source fields here, and you'll see the raw Welsh Allen values, or the, the raw HL7 values from the Welsh Allen. What you want to do is just copy all of this into our clipboard. And now we're going to use that to extract values from this, because you can see here I have on OBX4, right down here, I have the pulse oximetry rate and saturation, and it's right now the value is 95. So we want to tell Mirth we want to take this value out of this message and put it into the database. So now we copied over our message. We want to go to Channels, click on Walsh Allen, go to Edit Channel. Go to Destinations and click on Edit Transformer. Now what we want to do is we want to make, make a new step in this that's going to take, that's going to find our SPO2 data and extract it. So we want to add a new step. I'm going to call it SPO2. And over here, on these three tabs here, you want to click on Message Template. Now in this box here, you want to right-click, paste our stored message. You can see that's the message that we got from the Welsh Allen. Now we're looking for the value that's stored in OBX4. So what we want to do is move tabs over to Message Trees. And you can see our different individual keys here from the HL7 data. And we set as OBX4, so one, two, three, four. It's going to be under this one. And it's subdivided even e under even more fields. Um, in this case, I think it is the one, two, three, four, five, six, sixth field. So we can try OBX6. Nope, so it's the one before that. So OBX5. 
there you go. So 95 is our SpO2 value. So what we want to do is we want to take this, click on it, and drag it over into mapping. You can see it automatically fills out this string here. And what the string does is it tells Mirth Connect what we want to take out of this message. It converts it to a string and then prepares it to be sent somewhere. So what we want to do now is we want to click Validate Step. Say Validation Successful. Click Validate Transformer. Successful, so we can click Back to Channel. Now we want to edit our SQL query to tell it to include the SPO2 data. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit this uh, top line here first. So go all the way to the end, just before the parentheses, add in a comma, and then you want to give it the same name that you gave it when you made the field. So in this case, I named it PSPO2, all lowercase. And now underneath here, under the values, same thing, right before the parentheses, you want to add a comma, space, and then from this list here, if you scroll down, we have another field called SPO2. So all you have to do is just take this and drag it over to that new spot just before the parenthesis here. And it fills this out. Now we can click Save Changes. Click Validate Connector. And then click Deploy Channel. And click Yes on that. So now Mirth Connect knows to take the SPO2 data and store it into the database. So we can test this if we go to Channels and view messages under the Welsh Allen channel. And since we already have a message sent that has SPO2 data in, in it, we can actually send that data again and have it reprocessed. And what it will do is it will create another record in the database. It's exactly the same, but this, at this time it will include the SPO2 value. So we can go to, uh, click on source, right click on it, click on reprocess message and go ahead and click Overwrite Existing Messages and click OK. And now it will have reprocessed our message and resent the values over with the SPO2 data. So if we switch back to our Linux machine, we can take a look and see if it's changed. All right, so we're back here on Linux, log in as Mirth, and then MariaDB with the password field. Use Mirth. And now we want to view the contents of the database. But in this case, I'm just going to view the first name and the SPO2 data. So we're going to build a query that just extracts those two things. We're going to do select p first name, comma, p SPO2 from patient. And that will show you only the values of the first name and the SPO2 number. Click enter. And you can see here we have our records here from before, where from before we weren't counting the SPO2 value. So that extra John record in the middle doesn't have an SPO2 value. But when we reprocessed it, it sent the same result over. So the next field down is the same person, but this time it has the SPO2 value in the database.